Today we're going to be talking about AI and should we be using this artificial intelligence in our photo post production. Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64Academy.com and F64Elite.com, where we learn how to master Photoshop to make better photographs. This is Photoshop for photographers. Hence, I did not say this is artificial intelligence for photographers. Today's topic is going to be AI, and should we be using AI in our photo post-production? Now, before I begin, I want to tell you two things. One, I used to do some work with one of these companies that is making AI now. The second thing is I do not get paid by Adobe whatsoever for anything that I produce. So before you think that I'm producing this because I, I tout uh, Adobe stuff, I don't even know if they know who I am or know who my name is, okay? I've never had any contact with them, nor have I ever made a penny from Adobe. So this is not a Photoshop ploy to get you to jump on Photoshop and not use AI. But I do wanna talk about artificial intelligence in the photo post-production space. And the reason why is because many, 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 many people have been asking me what my thoughts are on that via email and my live events and many other places because it's been a new buzzword uh, coming out now uh, because two different companies are spouting the term AI after two of their very important brands. So whether you use AI is completely up to you. Really, it is. Uh, I don't care if you use AI or not. But I'm going to give you three things that you should think about, three things that you should ponder before you ever consider buying any piece of AI software. Okay. The first point is this. AI is just another buzzword. It's just a new buzzword that's coming out right now that these companies are saying that they've scanned these, you know, 10,000 or so images to make the best uh, assessment for your photographs in the future. It's basically this. There's always going to be the next best thing. And just when you thought a software company could make the best product they're going to make, they're always going to have to come up with something that's going to come over the top, right? Otherwise, there'd be no need for them to continue producing the software. So my personal opinion is this term AI that's being put before or after any software brand at this point is really just a buzzword to get you to think that this is the way of the future. Is AI the way of the future? I don't think so. And that leads me into my next point. The second point I have is that nothing, there is nothing in on this planet that can replace hard work and personal experience. I'm going to repeat that. There is nothing on this planet that can ever replace hard work or personal experience. So if this AI is saying that it can supposedly make my photos better so that I can spend more time shooting, I don't think that's really the best thing that they should be touting. Because if you're going to be a true artist photographer and make the best work that you could possibly make, you're going to want to spend time making that work, not letting some artificial intelligence creep up on you and make a determination for you as to what that work should look like. If you think that this AI thing is something new, it's not. AI right now is mainly being marketed as a way to speed things up and make things faster for you. Well, let's go back to when Ansel Adams was a photographer with analog film. Processing film was difficult subject to only photographers. Then Kodak came along, then Polaroid came along, and these companies made things faster and they made it easier for the average person to process photographs. So what I'm gonna tell you here is that if you're jumping on the AI bandwagon, you're probably the average person using the software. If that's a harsh reality, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Any true artist photographer is going to put in the hard work and personal experience to create the best work that they can possibly create. And artificial intelligence just cannot do that. I'm going to prove it in the examples that I have for you. My third and final point for this, before I get into showing you some of the things that I've done with the current AI software that's out right now, is that when you choose to use AI software, you are actually placing your trust and your faith into a company that has said, this is the benchmark for success. It's the truth. What you're saying when you're using AI and you click that button that says, yes, do your AI magic on my photograph. It's running its algorithm that it does and it's doing all the things that it's doing to your tones and to your colors and it's trying to make your image look as best as it possibly can to be the benchmark of success. Well, I gotta tell you something. Usually the output, especially from what I've seen, is not entirely great. It's not even close to something that I would use going into Photoshop to make my colors better. It's poor. Okay, that's what the quality that I've seen at this point, both in the ads that I've seen and in my personal experience using this AI software. The most critical point I have for you here, though, is that when you place your faith in another company for the benchmark for success, you're basically saying that I only want to succeed with my photograph. I don't want to fail. So what happens is, is, is if you run it through this algorithm and it looks like crap, you say, oh, this program sucks and you drop it. And then you never truly get better at what it is that you're doing. I've noticed that 
I don't learn anything from my successes. What I learn from my successes actually is the inspiration to keep going forward. But what I learn the most from are my failures. When I'm in Photoshop and I'm crafting my images and I'm, I'm doing all the work that I need to do to make that thing beautiful and perfect, and I come back and look at it two hours later and say, man, you did a number on this one, Blake. I learned from those failures. I don't learn from my successes. The same is true in my personal business, on my YouTube channel. Anytime I've failed, I've always overcome. But when I've succeeded, I never noticed what that success truly meant without that bedrock foundation of what failure felt like. So let's just put it this way. Let's say you're new to photography and you get this AI stuff. You install it on your computer, you grab your photos, you bring them in and you run it through this AI. You say, wow, that's what photography is supposed to look like? I, I hope not. I hope not. But unfortunately, that's what's going to happen with this AI stuff. New photographers are going to be coming in here saying, oh, I can get out and shoot more because that's what these people said I could do with this stuff. They're going to process their images in horrible ways and not be producing true successful pieces of artwork. I'm going to show you some examples here, but one of my last and final points that I think is really important is until I can sit down and have an emotional experience with a piece of artificial intelligence where that piece of artificial intelligence can cry tears of joy and passion with me because of a success that they've had about a photo that they've created and an emotional experience that they've had because of it, I will not use AI. Period. So if we can get to a point where AI actually has emotions and can express their emotions through artwork, I am on board. I will be there all day long. Until then, I don't even think it's a good starting point. And here's why. So this image that you're seeing right here is a portfolio piece of mine. One of my favorite portfolio pieces that I have. I took the original raw file and ran it right through the AI processing. And this was my result. Now, what you'll see in my example is that I've taken a lot of time to simplify my tones and my colors to make it an experience, one that makes you feel the colors uh, of this forest with this waterfall dripping through it. What we have right here is a vomit mess of color. Here's another portfolio image of mine from Badlands National Park, South Dakota. I loved, loved this experience here. Gorgeous experience. I will tell you that the original raw file did not have these types of colors in it. I had to exploit those colors to find those colors and to fine tune and craft those colors. I brought that original raw file into this AI software and this was the output. <laughs> this is not the benchmark for success folks, okay? Now I did even try to experiment with the sliders and the adjustments to make this a good piece in that proprietary software all by itself and it just couldn't do it. It couldn't create the experience that I created and I created alone through my personal experience. This last and final image I'm gonna share with you is a very simple image from Chicago, taken from the top of one of the buildings during their open house Chicago event, looking towards the lighthouse on the lake. Love the simplicity of this piece and the way that the colors just beautifully kind of interweave throughout the image. This is what AI did when I gave it the original raw file. It just doesn't do the colors justice the way I do the colors justice because I inserted my mood and my emotion into this image in a way that AI can't. Does that mean that you can't use AI as a starting point? I'd say maybe you could, maybe, but you'd have to do a lot of work in order to make it better in Photoshop to get pieces like this, portfolio worthy pieces like this. It would take a lot of work, a lot of chasing your tail, essentially, trying to reverse uh, some of the bad color casts that you get in some of these images that are produced from this AI software. In closing, there is no substitute for hard work and experience, okay? And there's no push button solution for anything. What I would suggest as a solution is to learn the hard way, put the hard work in, and you'll be much happier, and you will actually be able to uh, produce successful pieces even through your failures. I can teach you all that stuff. Just stick around here and subscribe. Good floor!